I'm Jean-Marc Vallet. I'm the author of R Noise, and I'll be talking about neural speech enhancement through R Noise, and also about how it affects the browser. I'm currently employed by Amazon, but I'm giving this talk as an individual. Speech enhancement isn't exactly a new topic. It's been around since the 70s, and it, traditionally it's done using signal processing. It uses complicated spectral estimators, usually combined with hand-tuned parameters. And uh, it works pretty decently on stationary noise at mid to high SNRs. The complexity is very low, but you know the quality is limited. On the other hand, there's a new approach which is based on deep neural networks. It's entirely data-driven, so no need to tune all these parameters but they use large models so typically in the tens of megabytes and it handles non-stationary noise it works at low snr so much higher quality than the traditional approach but unfortunately it's uh the complexity is quite high and uh, our noise is a way of trying to get the best of both worlds so trying to get to the same quality as the DNN approach with the complexity of the DSP approach. Our noise is really a hybrid solution. It starts from a conventional DSP approach, and from there it replaces these complicated estimators with a deep neural network that includes several fully connected layers as well as three GRU layers. One of the key tricks to help bring the complexity down is that the spectrum is divided into 22 critical bands rather than processing every single frequency bin separately. And each of these 22 bands is independently attu attenuated. So we have a gain for each of these bands and it controls how the, the each band is modulated. This works pretty well except for one case when we have voice speech and we have noise between pitch harmonics and to handle that case we have a pitch filter that acts as, as a comp filter and removes the noise between the harmonics to get actual clean speech in terms of results uh, you can hear here the effects of our noise being toggled on and off while I'm speaking and typing at the same time with the fan in the background. Uh, you can observe the um, results in this slide. They're based on a PASC evaluation, so objective evaluation. And you can also go to this interactive demo where you can listen to several samples and also actually try our noise on your own voice uh, using uh, JavaScript. Now let's look at the complexity of our noise for a 48 kilohertz mono input signal. Our noise uses 215 neurons, which means uh, 88,000 weights. And it processes audio in frames of 10 milliseconds, which means we have 100 frames per second. The total complexity in our noise is around 40 megaflops. And the most complex parts are first the DNN, which is mostly, mostly made of matrix vector products. And the complexity of that is around 17 and a half megaflops. We have FFTs and IFFTs, and those cost around seven and a half megaflops. And then we have a pitch search, which uses a correlation or a convolution and costs around 10 megaflops. So these are the main parts. So if we want to optimize our noise, then these are the things we need to look at. Um, the current code base you can find on GitHub is C code, uh, completely unoptimized, not vectorized. And it still runs with about 1% CPU on x86, about 40% on a Raspberry Pi 3. And we even have a version that runs in real time in the browser through Enscriptum and JavaScript. Looking forward a bit, our noise is really a minimalistic solution. 
its DNN is really quite small compared to other approaches. But in the future, you could see systems where it would grow by a factor of a hundred or even a thousand. It is mostly made of um, matrix vector products, especially if we grow the DNN, the FFT will become negligible. And uh, so if we want it to run in real time, we need low overhead because we need many of these matrix vector products every second. In terms of pure DNN approaches, some of them um, are using really large convolutional network. And that involves complexity sometimes up to the tens of gigaflops, which may even require GPUs in some cases if we want it uh, to run in real time. And there's also a new approach that is emerging. It's not yet clear what will become of this, but these are vocoder-based resynthesis approaches where the idea is to denoise acoustic features rather than audio, and then use a TTS-like vocoder to resynthesize clean speech out of this. So it could potentially provide much fewer artifacts in the denoise speech. And uh, if we want that to run in real time, the most uh, promising approaches are through WaveRNN or even LPCNet. Those involve around three to 10 gigaflops. So less than some of the pure DNN approaches, but at the same time, it requires a, um, processing at the sample level, which means that many GPUs will not be able to process that in real time. And we will actually need a CPU because we need to compute the network for every single sample at 16 or 24 or 48 uh, kilohertz in the future. That concludes my talk. For those interested, the RNoise source code is available on GitHub under a BSD license. You can also have a look at the demo page for uh, many samples as well as some uh, high level explanations. And you can have a look at some of the references here if you want to read more about RNoise and some of the topics for this talk. Thank you.